Hi, I'm Colin Devy. I'm a marine geologist, and with me is Marilia Urlaub, who's an expert on seafloor landslides. Now, we know that tsunamis are generated in the ocean. I guess most of us would think they're to do with earthquakes, but some of them to do with landslides. Why is that the case, and why are they so dangerous? So, um, it's similar to earthquakes. In submarine landslides, displace a huge amount of mass, and thereby bring the water into action, so to say. Mm -hmm. And um, they are particularly dangerous because um, they, these landslides can occur anywhere where the seafloor is inclined, so even on very gentle slopes. Mm -hmm. And um, they, are, they are pretty much unpredictable. We don't know when they occur, we don't know where they occur, and this makes us pretty much completely un unprepared mm -hmm. for these um, disasters. Okay, um, and will every landslide produce a tsunami or is there some way of differentiating? Um, no, because um, the tsunamigenic potential of a landslide depends on um, its initial acceleration, mm -hmm. it depends on the volume of the landslide and on the water depth in, depth in which the landslide occurs. Okay, does that mean then that deeper ones are more dangerous or is it the shallow ones? That uh, are more no, dangerous? it's the other way around. So the, the shallower they occur, generally um, the more dangerous they are. Okay, that's, and can we predict where landslides are going to happen? Do we have any idea to sort of say, okay, this is a place we want to be careful of? Um, well, we, we can go to our geolog geological invent inventory of the past, so mm -hmm. we can look where landslides have occurred in geological times, mm -hmm. but the, the, th the factors that cause these landslides are very, are very little understood, so we are mm -hmm. just currently um, trying to understand um, the, the, the mechanisms that lead to seafloor failure, and this is particularly interesting because um, these landslides are not, are not only much larger than any landslides on land, mm -hmm. but um, they also occur on very gentle slopes, as I said before. So. Um, they occur on, on slope angles of one or two degrees, which is um, mm -hmm. about that of a FIFA certified football pitch. And you wouldn't even notice that, wow. that there is a slope. Wow. So, and these, these slopes fail catastrophically. Okay, and is there something geological, are there particular geological settings where you would say, okay, that's something you need to be careful of? Um, we have um, particular, we don't have particular sites because, as I said, uh, they, they can occur mm -hmm. anywhere where the slope is inclined. Um, we have made um, some progress in, 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 in getting to know where very large landslides tend to occur mm -hmm. and where rather small landslides tend to occur. So, interestingly, on active margins, so um, at near subduction zones, um, we observe rather small landslides but many of them, mm -hmm. and on, on um, passive continental margins, so where you don't have many earthquakes, um, these landslides tend to be extremely big. So one example is um, this Dorega slide of Norway. Mm -hmm. Th so that occurred um, around 8,150 years ago, and um, that removed, or that the, the landslide moved um, a volume that of debris that would cover um, the whole um, New York metropolitan area in about 200 meters of debris. Wow. So that's wow. the scale we're talking about. Okay. And is there any relationship to climate change? I mean, if we see sea level rise, if we see warming of the seawater, is that going to affect how landslides work in any way? That's quite a difficult um, question because um, we are not very certain about the, co the courses mm -hmm. of these landslides. So um, what we can say is sea level rise as such does not affect the stability of slopes, mm -hmm. but of course anything that goes with a sea level rise. So all the changes, um, the, the, the differences in, um, in sedimentation rates, for example, or, or um, similar things. So um, gas hydrates, for example, they make the sediment more stable, so mm -hmm. they provide stability, but once they dissociate, um, this stability is likely to get lost. So okay. we are not entirely sure what happens um, when these gas hydrates dissociate and the stability gets, gets lost. And um, also um, earthquakes can trigger submarine landslides. and. Um, a rise in sea level is likely to increase the seismicity. So 
but there could be a relationship with that. Yeah, and when we're, when we're talking about earthquakes, we have something for measuring earthquakes in front of us, I believe, right? Yeah, so this is, um, this is an ocean bottom seismometer. We call it OBS. They think to the seafloor and um, stand at the seafloor for um, long times and for maybe a year or so, up to a year, and they measure the seismic activity. So they um, are basically a seismometer as we use them on land, but um, for use at the seafloor. Okay, and with big orange parts on it, this is the flotation, so they come back up. You don't just throw them over the side. You do actually want to get them back No, again, we do right? want to recollect them because we want, to, of course, to get the data. Yeah. And yes, so this is uh, for flotation, and um, there's an acoustic release that um, is basically a little hook which attaches um, this thing to an anchor, and this can be released um, with an acoustic signal so that all of this comes up and the anchor stays in. Thank you, Morelia. Lots of things I didn't know about landslides mm -hmm. and how they could probably generate tsunamis. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you.